Thank you. Well, the richest man in the world went to space this morning. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos and three others hitched a ride on Blue Origin's Shepard spacecraft, traveling more than 65 miles above the Earth. He described it as the, quote, best day ever. This follows a similar, though different, recent flight by another wealthy space traveler, setting off a new era of so-called space tourism. Now, there are a lot of claims out there about this billionaire space race and just how much history they're actually making. We asked Gabe Cohen with our Verify team to get the facts. The billionaire space race is heating up, launching a new era of space tourism. These latest flights led by Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos seem nothing short of historic. But what is the history of space tourism? Let's verify. Are these billionaires and their crews the first space tourists in history? Our sources, three space exploration experts. Have we seen space tourists before? Absolutely, and it depends on how you define the term space tourists. Space historian Dr. Roger Launius points back to the 1980s when NASA developed a program to train non-career astronauts and send them to space. But they weren't tourists. Each had a task. Two congressmen flew for political purposes. Then in 1986, Krista McAuliffe, a teacher, joined the crew of the Challenger. But she was to fly on that particular mission to perform a specific task, which was to teach children. And the idea behind this was wouldn't it be great if we can inspire the next generation? After the ship exploded mid-flight, killing the crew, NASA paused the program. Space tourism didn't take off until 15 years later, 2001, when billionaire Dennis Tito paid a reported $20 million for a ride on a Russian spaceship to the International Space Station. For no other purpose than tourism, just to be there because he was there. Since then, a handful of space tourists have paid millions to hitch a ride on Russian space shuttles. And there's now been seven or eight of these individuals. But it's never happened here, making Richard Branson and his crew the first space tourists in U.S. history. Though there is one point of contention. Did Branson actually get to space? But it's always going to be contentious. Dr. Eric Seedhouse teaches space flight operations at Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. The two definitions of space. Branson's Virgin Galactic flight reached 54 miles above Earth, just past the 50 mile threshold NASA and the FAA used to mark the start of space. But the international organization that regulates space and keeps official records actually sets the start of space at 100 kilometers, roughly 62 miles, known as the Kármán line. On Tuesday, Jeff Bezos soared 66 miles up and crossed the Kármán line. Blue Origin, Bezos' company, took a jab at Virgin Galactic on Twitter, saying their rocket, New Shepard, was designed to fly above the Kármán line so none of their astronauts have an asterisk next to their name. There will always be an asterisk next to those flights if you get below 62 miles and still, and still try and call it space. Either way, experts say these private companies are changing the game for space tourism. This is about the normalization of space flight. Marco Caceres is a senior space analyst at the Teal Group, a defense and aerospace consultancy. Essentially, it's going to jumpstart an industry that really hasn't um, been particularly robust in the really since the, the dawn of the space age because it's been dominated by government and government tends to be much more cautious. But space tourism is still reserved for those with deep pockets. SpaceX, owned by Elon Musk, is charging $55 million each to fly a group of tourists to the ISS next year. Blue Origin auctioned off their first ticket for $28 million. A one hour trip on Virgin Galactic space plane costs a bit less just a modest $250,000, though the price should come down as more ships go up. Will there come a time where you and me can take a flight like this? I think so. It will probably won't be in the next five years. If you start launching that aircraft, uh, that space plane, every day, you could see it come down to, say, tens of thousands of dollars. So we can verify. These billionaires and their crews are not the first space tourists in world history, but they are the first in U.S. history, with many more flights on the horizon. With your Verify, I'm Gabe Cohen. A mere tens of thousands. What a deal. Meanwhile, a lot of Americans would just like to fly anywhere in the country and be able to afford it, but who knows? With thanks. a mask on, of course. Yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for joining us for today's Town Hall. You can send your questions or comments to our text line. And there is a lot of news ahead, including that breaking news on the fire, severe weather out there. Channel 2 News at 6 with Scott and Mary Alice is up after this quick break.